Welcome back to another hardware news recap. For this week, the major news item, the anchor, is that NVIDIA bought too many GPUs. That's been a bit of a problem for them. Also, GPU shipments trending downward as well as potentially profits. Samsung, Hynix, and Micron, the memory suppliers, are facing potential antitrust fines ranging from anywhere from $800 million to $8 billion. Bit of a range there. And then also, Intel's CEO resigned. So it's been a week filled with drama in the hardware world. Before that, this video is brought to you by Corsair's HS70 wireless gaming headset, which focuses on comfort with memory foam, adjustable ear cups, and a padded headband. The headset has a 40-foot low latency range over wireless, lasts for up to 16 hours of gaming use, and has extra focus on build quality to ensure it lasts a long time. Learn more at the link in the description below. For the first news item, NVIDIA buying too many GPUs. This was this has been posted by one or two news outlets at this point, and it's something that we spoke with people about during the Computex timeline. So we've been able to confirm basically the stories that NVIDIA allegedly purchased too many GPUs in anticipation of mining to some extent for the Pascal architecture. And at this point, it's looking like they're delaying their launch of Turing as a result of having too many Pascal GPUs. So if you're wondering why GPU prices have been trending downward a bit and why some of the AIB partners have suddenly found budget to run ads for video cards when they haven't needed to for months, that's probably why. And from what we understand, we're still on target for a next generation architecture launch probably in August. It's just a question of why was it pushed to August? And from everything we've seen from the people we've spoken with and from the other news stories online, it does sound like NVIDIA in fact bought too many Pascal GPUs and they're stuck with overstock. This goes back to what we talked about when we spoke with manufacturing partners off the record previously about why they would or would not get invested in mining. And the reason why not for a lot of them was because they didn't want to be stuck in this situation where they have too many GPUs. We've also heard that one of the board partners has requested to return some of their excess GPUs to NVIDIA. Not sure if that'll go through, but uh, that does indicate that they definitely bought too many. Next one, GPU shipments and profits trending downward. Prices could still remain high here. So in another Digitimes report, AIB partners are expected to see their shipments fall in the second half of 2018 due to a reduction in cryptocurrency mining demand. As shipments and profits shift downward due to the demand shrinkage, prices are still anticipated to remain somewhat high. There have been a couple of cards in some market segments that have finally been brought down. 1070 Ti is a bit more affordable now, for example, but a couple of the other cards like Vega do remain far over MSRP in a lot of situations. Companies such as Asus, Gigabyte, MSI, and PowerColor, Toll, their parent company, are all expected to see inflated inventories as they abandon the mining market. As prices continue to normalize somewhat, vendors are still maintaining their overall higher, or I should say the retailers are maintaining their overall higher prices of about 20% inflated over MSRP, but this is much lower than the 40 to 50% inflation over MSRP that we've seen previously but still higher than the normal 8 to 10% kind of max that we saw before the mining boom. According to Digitimes, industry sources indicate that DRAM suppliers, Samsung, SK Hynix, and Micron could be facing antitrust fines up to $8 billion in China for price fixing. The three companies collectively control 90% of the DRAM market, and the memory prices have been rising almost exponentially since 2017, early on at this point, and something that we've also covered many times now is that this is almost cyclic, where if you plot it over the last five years, you'll see the prices rise and fall in basically perfect unison with the stock prices of these companies. Samsung notwithstanding because it makes so many things. So Samsung, Hynix, and Micron have all confirmed that China's antitrust regulators have visited their offices and had conversations with them as part of an ongoing investigation into potential price fixing. Nothing's been publicly confirmed yet. If found guilty of this, the vendors could face fines ranging from $800 million up to $8 billion. The estimated fines are based on profits in China between 2016 and 2017. As we've previously mentioned, China has no small interest in memory-related things. They've become the world's largest consumer of DRAM, and the Chinese government is currently working on becoming more self-sufficient 
and its own memory supply for the future. Next one, Intel CEO has resigned. So Intel has announced that Brian Krasanich has resigned amidst discovering a, uh, quote, past consensual relationship with another Intel employee, which violates Intel's non-fraternization policy for management. Intel has appointed CFO Bob Swan as the interim CEO while they conduct a search for a permanent replacement. So if you're looking for a job that pays about $21 million a year, they're hiring. Krasanich was tasked with several restructuring initiatives during his tenure as CEO, and the most notable was being Intel's transition to a data-centric business and evolving past the PC segment exclusively. Krasanich was a decades-old employee, starting with Intel in 1982, and the timing is a bit suspect, as the alleged relationship wasn't a new occurrence or news in general. It's just something that they finally decided to dig into now. Difficulty launching 10 nanometers could lead the jaded among us to assume ulterior motives. Next up, AMD 7 nanometer Radeon Pro Vega 20. Ashes of the Singularity benchmarks were apparently leaked. And these benchmarks point to a suspected workstation grade GPU based on a 7 nanometer Vega 20. Note first, however, that there have been several fake leaks or fake benchmarks lately in the form of modified Cinebench or other benchmark files. So we'd recommend scrutinizing the Vega 20 leaks a little more than normally. Vega 20 is expected to hit the server and data center market with little word on when or if other markets can expect AMD's 7 nanometer Vega 20 silicon. AMD has clearly stated that they will bring 7 nanometer silicon to the gaming sector eventually, but it's been widely speculated that it will come in the form of Navi rather than Vega. Early Vega 20 specs claim 4096 stream processors, support for up to 32 gigabytes of HVM2, allegedly twice the density and power efficiency overall, and a 35% performance increase compared to 14 nanometer Vega. Also in AMD news, AMD has somewhat quietly launched the Pro V340. Rumors have surfaced online speculating as to whether this card was a Vega 10 or Vega 20, 20 being based on seven nanometers, and it's almost certainly not seven nanometers as AMD would have made a much larger announcement out of this. Additionally, the Pro V340 is supposedly a multi-chip or multi-GPU solution comprised of two Vega 10 dies with a total of 32 gigabytes of HBM2, presumably split between the two GPUs and giving you 16 gigabytes per Vega GPU. Vega 20 allegedly supports up to 32 gigabytes for a single solution, single die, and the Pro V340 is aimed at virtualization for professional use, such as oil and gas research, designers, media and entertainment, things like that. Next one is AMD appealing to the cheap seats by sort of trolling Intel. And Intel recently held a sweepstake celebrating the 40th anniversary of their venerable 8086 processor and the launch of the limited edition i7-8086K. And they took this opportunity to troll Intel by offering the winners of Intel sweepstakes a chance to trade in their i7-8086K that they just won for one of AMD's Threadripper 1950X CPUs. Completely different target markets. It certainly gets interest and attention in the community, but it is definitely appealing to the cheap seats on that one. Intel quickly responded, by the way, via their own official Intel gaming Twitter page and said, at AMD Ryzen, if you wanted an Intel Core i7-8086K processor too, you could have just asked us. Smiley face. Thanks for helping us celebrate the 8086. Overall, a good spirited exchange between the two companies of a bit odd and unexpected. Next up, Intel hires former Larrabee architect. So, this story gets a little confusing for anyone who's been covering Raja Kadori as he was at AMD because Intel hired Raja Kadori a while ago now and uh, Kadori also just hired Intel's former Larrabee GPU architect Tom Forsyth to aid in the development of the company's new GPUs. Forsyth previously made advancements to AVX instruction processing, particularly AVX 512, and has been speculated as a potential player for VR development focus at Intel for the next generation Intel GPU. Forsyth noted on Twitter that he will, quote, start at Intel shortly as a chip architect in Raja Kadori's group. More AMD news on this one. AMD's working with Cooler Master on their Wraith Ripper cooler. This is something that was shown at Computex, though we didn't cover it at the show. We were focused on the cases. AMD announced Threadripper 2 at Computex in an official capacity, and our understanding presently is that it's looking like 250 watts to upwards of potentially 300 watts TDP for Threadripper 2. Motherboard vendors are working on the X399 refresh to ensure they can 
take this amount of power and heat. Look at the MSI X399 creation, for example. But cooling vendors have to get involved too. And one of those is Cooler Master, who are working on new TR4 coolers. So AMD is collaborating with Cooler Master for the Wraith Ripper Mega Cooler. They're calling it a massive air cooler capable of dissipating 250 watts of heat as measured by AMD's version of TDP. They all do it a bit differently. The cooler will use eight pairs of heat pipes attached to a large stack of pretty densely packed fins, and Wraith Ripper will purportedly guarantee memory module clearance because it's going to have several slots on either side of the socket, so that's a consideration. And it will also be adorned with addressable RGB LEDs because that's innovation. A center-mounted concealed 120mm fan will handle the airflow. Wraith Ripper will be sold through Cooler Master, and neither Cooler Master nor AMD have revealed pricing or availability details on that cooler just yet. The last one is about be quiet. It's not the most exciting thing. They've opened a US-based service center. So German-based Be Quiet has announced the opening of their first US-based service center and declared a commitment to our US-based customers. And Be Quiet also noted that this service center will be based in Los Angeles and will be aimed at both consumer and business customers. If you didn't know, Be Quiet has had issues in the past selling their products in the US because Newegg is not the easiest retailer to work with. So they had to actually bypass Newegg and list on their own on the third-party marketplace originally before Newegg was willing to work with them. So they've had a bit of trouble getting into the US, but they're trying harder now. Finally, hardware sales for the week. EVGA has got their GTX 1070 Ti at $490 with an included Supernova 550 watt G3 power supply. And we'll put a link to that in the description below. There are also several other video cards that are on sale, which is basically MSRP at this point, but it's been a while. So we'll link to one or two of those below as well once the uh, video goes live, we'll have more updates on that. And finally, Corsair's TX650M is on sale for $50 after rebate, normally $90 on Newegg, which we'll link below as well. So that's it for this time. As always, go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick up one of our mod mats, one of the GN teardown cubes that we gave to vendors as awards during the show, if you want your own, or go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly. Subscribe for more. I'll see you all next time.